Can you see that? I just I just put these goggles on and I realized that I can can you see the reflection there? See the reflection of myself right there? Isn't that cool? I just put these on. See? Ooh, I can move around and create. I always feel like I'm under construction. I have these goggles on as a metaphor. I'll take them off because I am on this earth trying to learn, trying to figure out who I am. So it's time for Goddess Kring. Goddess Kring www.shannonkringen.com Write me with questions or comments. P.O. Box 20610 Seattle 98102 I'm on the same time every week. I've been doing weekly cable access TV shows since 1995. If you write me and give me your snail mail address, I will send you one of these lovely Kring collage postcards. These are photographs of me. I model for artists and I also take photographs of myself. I think this is a beautiful collage that I made. And I hand paint tennis shoes. Those are some shoes right there. So here I am. Sitting alone in my apartment, thinking, trying to figure out who I am and what I'm doing. And lately I've been in a rush. I've been panicking and freaking out about the future. I've been in and out of therapy since 1992, and I've recently taken a long break from therapy, and I'm just now beginning to get back into therapy um, and I'm trying to break through the self-consciousness that I feel right now I'm a highly sensitive person I have a book right now that I'm reading called The Highly Sensitive Person How to Thrive When the World Overwhelms You because the world does overwhelm me I'm very introspective Sometimes that gets misunderstood as being really self-absorbed and as being narcissistic. Part of my healing path is to recognize the fact that my family dynamic was that I was this only child of divorced parents and my parents are sensitive loving people and I love them very much but it's recently come to my attention that a lot of my needs were neglected emotionally as a child I was physically taken care of by my grandmother and my mother and my father and I went to school and I did okay in school and I had friends and I used to roller skate up and down the block and I had a lot of great things about my childhood but I have this deep sadness and trauma, emotional trauma and longing inside my heart. And that's because the adults around me when I was a child were preoccupied with themselves to the point of being, I think, a little bit narcissistic, to the point where I was neglected, to the point where I didn't get enough mirroring back and forth from the adults around me about who I am, who is Shannon, and part of the reason why I videotape myself and part of the reason why I have a website that has over 500 photographs of me, many of which I took of myself, some of which other wonderful photographers shot of me. Part of the reason why I have that it was because I'm an artist and I love to create and self-portrait is my favorite thing to do. I also write in a journal every day. And part of the reason why I do all of these forms of expression is because I'm trying to figure out who I am by literally looking in the mirror because it's hard for me 
I think part of what friendships and romantic relationships are for is so that you can look in a mirror and see yourself in the other person and, and you can hold up a mirror to the other person. You give and receive love with, with friends and family and a lover or a husband or a wife or a son or a daughter. And it's all about relationship between human beings and we see we, we see each other in each other. We're all connected. And giving and receiving communication with other people is something that's hard for me to do because I'm ashamed of the fact that I have emotional needs. Because I was brought up with adults who were very overwhelmed and had problems that they were dealing with. And as a child, I'm very sensitive. And as a child, I remember in second or third grade feeling like, the adults around me are having trouble and the best thing for me to do is to be really quiet and to not ask for too much help because they can't really give it to me. And I learned to shut down my needs and I learned to cut myself off from what my feelings were. And one of my problems is anger. I have a lot of anger inside me and it comes out. I suppress it, suppress it, suppress it, suppress it and then I explode, usually at the bus stop if I miss a bus. Here's the dreamy filter. Dreamy, dreamy filter. Ooh, dreamy filter. This is a scarf. See this scarf right here? I put this scarf on the lens and it creates kind of a, a smoky, dreamy thing. There, I just had to do that. So the adults around me were preoccupied with their own problems, and as a child I learned to shut off my feelings. And I think it's really good to be this self-aware about it, but I need to go beyond that. So to make a long story short, I'm getting back into therapy. And I go off and on between thinking that I should be on medication because I have mood swings, and I feel a lot of sadness. But I don't really think it's, it's my brain. I think it's the environment that I grew up in and the fact that I'm a very highly sensitive person and I have a lot of um, negative brain patterns in my head that I need to change. And um, I've tried, um, I was prescribed um, for depression, I was prescribed Prozac and that didn't really help me and I tried Paxil and I tried Zoloft and I tried St. John's Wort and Kava Kava um, diet improvements um, uh, exercise many of those things I think diet and exercise have helped me more than any kind of medication I've ever taken although I might try another kind of medication again although I'm very skeptical of that and there's been research recently on some antidepressant medications that show that perhaps they are hard on the, li the liver and the kidneys and there are side effects. One of the side effects to many antidepressant drugs is uh, that they cause you to lose your sex drive. And maybe that sounds like no big deal to some people, but to me it's that is puzzling to me that a normal healthy human being with hormones would lose their sex drive. To me, that implies that there's something more going on. If, if you take an antidepressant and it increases the serotonin in your brain, it seems puzzling to me that it would screw up your sex drive. And that just makes, it just doesn't seem safe to me. And um, I'm very skeptical of that. I think, okay, today, recently actually, recently actually, recently actually, I saw, um, a Jim Carrey film called Me, Myself, and Irene, and it was just a silly, goofy comedy. But as usual, in the Shannon Kringen way, I um, I saw it as a metaphor, and Jim Carrey plays this really nice police officer in Rhode Island who is so nice, he lets people walk all over him, and he doesn't stand up for himself, and people take advantage of him and make him do things that he doesn't really want to do, but he's too afraid to say no, so he does them. 
and he's cut himself off from his feelings and underneath it all he's really angry and he has all these feelings that he is not even aware that he has and he finally explodes one day fits and bursts fits and bursts he explodes one day after suppressing and repressing his feelings and emotions for like 20 years he explodes and then he goes into the other extreme which is to be very confrontational to argue with people to actually abuse people with his anger uh, physical and verbal abuse and violence which is not the answer but what I found cool is that this was a comedy and it was really fun and I love Jim Carrey he's very talented he's, his body's very flexible he's full of energy full of life even when he's doing comedy, he has this intensely serious, almost sad look in his eye. I think he's a very intelligent person, and he very much inspires me. And I think he's very funny because he's so serious and he's so sad at the same time. I think most of the best comedians in the world are tragic. It's like Shakespeare, comedy and tragedy. There's a fine line between comedy and tragedy. And I think these people like Jim Carrey really inspire me because of that and so I saw this film me myself and Irene as like a really good uh, I used it for therapy for myself today everything I do I use for therapy um, I'm healing and growing through my emotional honesty and I hope to inspire you to be honest and authentic in your expression giving and receiving yourself to people that you love and interact with and um, so he goes to the other extreme. He goes from suppressing himself to expressing himself so boldly that, that he becomes narcissistic. Narcissistic rage, they call it. And um, it's almost like he forgets about everyone else's feelings and he just focuses on his own feelings and it, cr it creates damage. And the moral to the story is, um, then somewhere in the film, he takes medication in the film, but they don't emphasize that. They don't focus on that. Actually, what ends up happening is he ends up, I won't give away the ending of the film or anything like that, but I'll just say that there's things in the film where he synthesizes and fuses together his, his two sides and becomes a whole person and learns how to love himself and express his anger and still have love and relationships and um, that's what I need to learn how to do. I think a lot of my mood swings, a lot of my freakouts are like the dam has burst. I repress myself, I cut myself off from my feelings because I'm ashamed of having needs and I've learned very dysfunctional ways of trying to cope with the stress of life normal everyday stress and so I suppress and then I express like the dam bursts a volcano explodes and that creates problems for me and so I need to learn balance I need to learn the gray way middle way Siddhartha way um, so these are some of the insights I've been having recently and I just fi finally figured out I've been dating this one guy for a year and I love him very much but I've been denying to myself that my needs are not being met and I want to continue to be this person's friend I love him very much and I hope that we'll be friends for the rest of our lives but romantically I'm completely not happy in the relationship and part of me is afraid romantically the relationship I have with this person is like anorexic it's like he doesn't have very much time to see me because he's going through a divorce and he has two children and he's very busy and he has a career and there's lots of stress that he has to deal with and he's very emotionally there for me and very nurturing and loving but we mainly just talk on the phone every day and that's just not enough you know I'm a very affectionate person, I'm a very sensual person, and I need someone, a life partner. I mean, I'm 31 years old right now, and I would like to get married someday, someday soon. 
Um, I might want to have a child. I'm not even sure. You see, this is the future I'm talking about. I don't really know where I'm going with all of this, but I'm trying to heal and grow and learn. And I'm not sharing this on television to get you to have sympathy for me or feel sorry for me or worry about me, but I think it just feels good to share my honest feelings about things. And I'm a strong person. I have a mother and father who are helping me. I have a therapist who's helping me. Um, I have a few friends, although my social life is rather anorexic, I must say, because I isolate myself and I do feel kind of ashamed. Some people think I have a few screws loose because of my show, um, but I think all artists are thought of as kind of eccentric, and especially if you're really honest about your emotions, you're bound to come off as a little crazy because in this culture that we live in, people are taught to not really share their feelings. We're taught to sort of pretend like we know it all and put on an ego mask, like we know exactly what we're doing and we don't want to admit that maybe we're wrong sometimes or that we make mistakes or that we have weaknesses, whatever. So I'm willing to admit that. Not that I'm perfect, not that I'm better than you, but I think being honest about your feelings is very healthy, and I don't think that that means you're crazy. Although I do think that when I'm self-destructive, I can see why some people might think I'm a little crazy, because why would somebody want to hurt themselves? I mean, that's, it's really kind of absurd to want to hurt yourself, let alone hurt anyone else. And I struggle with that, because I feel angry and guilty. Um, <clears throat> because I was born into a family and I, I sensed that the adults around me were a little bit overwhelmed and dealing with their own problems and so I tended to blame myself I thought oh I must be in the way I must be causing problems I better not have too many needs and I learned to not ask for help like in second or third grade I remember my report card my report cards would say from my teachers, Shannon needs to ask for help. When Shannon doesn't understand how to do something, you know, I tended to withdraw and sit there and like, I thought there was something wrong with me if I couldn't figure out how to read in third grade. I mean, third graders need help. Third graders need to be taught. And I, I tended to feel, because of my family dynamic, I tended to feel like it wasn't okay to ask for help. And if I did, I would be a burden on other people or it would mean that I was weak and I felt helpless and I was really scared as a child much of the time I was really really scared to really rely on other people because in a, in a lot of ways I was let down by the adults around me as a child and I know that they did their best and I talked to my mother and father about both of these issues, all of these issues, not both of them, all of these issues. I, I speak with them about this, but I also feel compelled to share through video. And I have a website. I write in my journal every single day. I have a journal online that I write in every day, and people can leave comments for me on my journal entries, and I put photographs. I post photographs of myself. My website is filled with photographs of me and I love to share my expression, my Kring speak poetry and photographs. And this is just, for me, this is therapy. This is a way to allow the healing to reveal the dreams because I have a fragile sense of who I am. And you, you're welcome to project onto me whatever you feel about yourself or your family or your childhood or your dreams because my goal in life is to grow and heal and learn who I am and pursue my goals and my dreams because I, I don't even know what they are sometimes I've always thought that I wanted to be famous and I am sort of a cult figure in Seattle but that's not really giving me what I wanted it to give me really what I want to do is connect with people and express myself and celebrate my uniqueness and inspire people and be a vehicle for tra transformation I think that my ultimate career would have something to do with healing, combining art with healing. For a while I thought I wanted to go back to college and get my BFA, but I've changed my mind once again about that. 
I'm actually not really sure. I want to combine healing with art. There's a woman named Gabrielle Roth who does music and dance. She wrote a book called Maps to Ecstasy, and she's all about healing and art, art, artistic expression as healing. Instead of just trying to do good art and put it up in fancy galleries and impress people with how great of an artist you are, how great you are with color and composition and, 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 con and uh, conceptual ideas, um, it's also about healing and growing and, and sharing compassion and empathy and coming from your heart. It feels good to do a monologue like this. I have not spoken like this on video in months, I don't think. Sometimes my show is very abstract, and sometimes it's just me kind of making funny faces into the camera, and I put body paint on, I dance around nude sometimes, I model for art classes for a living, and so being nude for me is like um, an artistic, healthy sense of expression that I like to share. And I am five foot nine and um, voluptuous um, and not skinny and... Um, I think our culture is really obsessed with cosmetic beauty and looking a certain way. And I think being physically fit and trim is a very healthy thing to do. But if your focus is on the cosmetic beauty, that's really shallow and can be very unhealthy. But if your focus is on your health, your bones and muscles and heart and lungs, that's a different thing. I think that is important. And throughout my life, my weight has gone up and down. I've never been skinny but I have been more physically fit than I am now and I probably would be happier if I was a little bit leaner but I'm working on that I've got a lot of issues about that I feel relatively beautiful relatively healthy and attractive I don't know I'm working on my self-esteem I'm working on what can I get from a relationship what can I give and receive with friends and with a loved one I would love to fall in love and get married and have a child um, but I know that my main relationship is the one that I have with myself. I mean, I think the main relationship that all of us have is with ourselves. I need to learn how to really love and nurture myself. But part of loving myself, I think, is having a relationship, is, is falling in love. Because that would fulfill some of my emotional needs. But I know that there's a lot of things that only I can give myself, nobody else can give me. There's a certain kind of self-love that I need to have because it's like there's a hole inside me because I abandon and neglect myself because the adults around me did it when I was a child and so I learned to mimic that. I learned to abandon myself. And I need to relearn that. There's a lot of things that I need to work on and that's one of them. And I think if I fully learn to love myself then I'll have a lot more to give the man that I fall in love with. Because I want a man who is also growing and working on himself. You know, the kind of man that I want to fall in love with is someone like me, who is, is, is creative and expressive and honest about their emotions and is centered and is grounded and is working on himself and trying to love himself and wants to give and receive love with me. And that's the kind of relationship I'm working on. That, I mean, that's, I'm working on that with myself, but that's the kind that I envision on attracting. And I'm not a real social person, so I don't know how I'm going to meet this man. But not that my whole life is based on whether or not I have a boyfriend, but I have been struggling with this for years, you know, with trying to find a romantic relationship that I can be happy with. It's healthy. But I know that that's not the be-all, end-all of my identity. But I can't deny that that's one of my needs. You know? Intimacy, sexuality, um, companionship, affection. You know, we do need other people. I need other people. And um, sometimes when I talk about my neediness, some people say, well, you know, nobody else can love you, Shannon. you got to do it yourself. And, you know... I've been trying to do it myself all my life. I'm an only child. I spent a lot of time by myself. And um, 
I was neglected, and I'm ashamed of needing other people, and I need to work on that because I'm starving for attention in some ways. Even though I do this show and people watch and people write me and I, I love getting feedback, um, my own personal life is I'm lonely, and I need to connect with people on a deeper level in person, you know, in real life. Not to degrade myself for doing my art. I like performance art. I like sharing with you, the audience, a mass of people out there watching me. I like this. But I, I need to balance myself. I also need to have more personal, intimate relationships one-on-one. -on -one. And that's a challenge for me. So how are you tonight? You can write me with questions or comments, and I'll write you back. You can email me or sign my guest book on my website. You can read my live journal, make comments to me. Um, I hope that you love yourself and that you're pursuing your dreams and that you're expressing your authentic self. Uh, it might sound corny, but I'm completely serious and completely sincere. And I hope you're having a good night tonight because uh, it feels good to share this. Thank you for listening to me, Shannon Nicole Kringen. Got a scream. So once again, my name is Shannon Kringen. You're watching Got a Scream. I'll see you next week. This is my newest book, The Highly Sensitive Person's Workbook. And I am working on it. And one more thing. Pardon the funk. Here it is. Goddess Kring. ShannonKringen.com. P.O. Box 20610. Seattle 98102. Write me with questions or comments and I will write you back. Um, feel free to log on to my website. Uh, I've got email. Goddess Kring at Hotmail.com. I have a guest book. And uh, my live journal is something that I'm really having fun with. It's, um, I write in it every, every single day, and it just feels so good to share. Thank you so much for listening to me. Um, please follow your heart and follow your dreams. I need to follow my own advice. I need to follow my bliss. I, a lot of times I lose touch with what my bliss is and I feel kind of numb. Life is a challenge. Life is fascinating. Life is full of paradox and metaphor and catch-22. All kinds of interesting things. Thanks a lot for watching. Peace and love to all of you. And namaste. The spirit in me is acknowledged, and that which connects us that is invisible is acknowledged. Good night.